Next up, I am excited to introduce Asad Raza. Asad has spent time in uh, technical and leadership at several different startups. He's founded his own company and served in engineering leadership roles and also worked as a consultant where he has helped other companies build their software applications. So in his unique experience, he's been able to work with many, many other companies, especially startups and nonprofit companies, to help them tune and tweak their software development practices. And I'm excited for him to be able to share his experiences of the best practices he's learned with you now. Remember to hop into chat, ask questions uh, of each other, and share your experiences as well while you are listening to Assad's stories. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Asad, and I uh, currently run my own small consulting company. Um, I am the coder in chief of that company. And the topic of my top, uh, talk is to use GitLab as a default DevOps tool for nonprofits and early stage companies. So, a little more about me I serve, I've served as chief technology officer, I've served as a CEO of some, uh, a couple of startups as well. And I've genuinely enjoyed the CTO role much better than that. And that's why uh, I moved forward in, you know, doing that full time as compared to, you know, uh, doing other roles. Uh, so my company, coreinchief.com, basically uh, we consult nonprofits in their digital transformation. And uh, all of this, I chose a direction based on my previous experience in the area uh, in my previous companies. Uh, since uh, 2013, since I started working professionally, uh, I've launched over 50 software applications uh, where some of them were, got featured into App Store and Play Store. Um, some of the applications also had um, millions of users and some of are still being used by hundreds of thousands of users right now. So when I started working uh, professionally, uh, DevOps looked like the Wild West. So basically people were just pushing files into directly into servers using uh, clients like FileZilla and um, it, was, uh, it was pretty much a mess. And uh, Git or Mercurial or any version control systems were not well adopted. Uh, so it became a really pain to actually review other people's code. It became a pain to actually uh, have any con conflicts in the different files that one, uh, a few developers were working on. So eventually when you know, start, things started getting better. And in a few years, we started using multiple tools we, uh, for each part of, uh, of, the pro or of the DevOps process. So we had multiple tools for building, for coding, for testing, and for deploying. But eventually what happened is, was that when, once the space got hot, everybody starts jumping in, and then the space start, started looking like this, which meant that it became impossible to use different tools. Each of, uh, if you're a consulting agency, each client had different requirements. So you pretty much had to learn each and every tool and there were so many configuration problems with tools as well. So one tool would get updated or something would change. And because of that, you would have to change uh, your configurations and your connections with different tools as well. So CI, CD or DevOps or the whole process became a mess. So uh, some of the apocalyptic scenarios that I've you know, seen, and, uh, and, uh, seen and witnessed during the years was that basically People uh, you know, would push code, uh, would push a change, and it would just break down, and we would not know where it broke down. So basically, as we all know, as startups or even as big companies, according to Parkinson's law, that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So basically, even if you're a small company or a big company, you would eventually start, try to ship any features at the end so you can either show your investors, your new customers, or your existing customers as well to get their, their premium memberships. So um, uh, one of the funniest stories that I came across was basically I was on a stage in New York at a big conference with, uh, in front of 2000 people uh, uh, three, four years ago, and our login feature broke down and the phone number field was not working when we were adding phone, uh, our phone number for verification. Uh, this caused a lot of embarrassment and we pretty much lost that pitching competition as well, basically because of that. And eventually, you know, uh, also, I, I also saw configuration issues and there were so many, uh, there were a lot of issues for human errors. So anybody who would work on uh, compiling all of these tools or configuring all of these tools together would have to uh, give a great amount of detail on each and every step of the process. 
So my first introduction with GitLab was not as a DevOps tool. Um, I saw a Y Combinator talk a few years ago where GitLab CEO was telling how he manages his 100-person remote company. And um, I, I became curious and saw that people were actually pushing changes to the handbook or GitLab employees were basically pushing changes to the handbook, which I found super funny because they were making their non-tech -tech people also use Git as well. <laughs> Uh, furthermore, uh, you know, then later I, you know, started using Git init GitLab initially for repositories, uh, and eventually, you know, once I became more and more proficient in it, uh, we pro started using it for a complete uh, workflow. And right now, GitLab is the only tool that I use uh, for my own work because it makes everything super easy, and there's only one point of failure. So there's before we actually go to what GitLab provides for a small company or a nonprofit with low uh, budget for technical teams, some of the problems that you, you uh, that happens with multi-tool approach is uh, you can't stay lean. So if you have uh, multiple DevOps tools on different stages, uh, there's a very hard, there's a very low chance that you can find somebody who knows uh, who who has an expertise on those tools and can debug it like an expert. Furthermore, hiring becomes a problem because the budget is low for us, for small companies, and somebody who has that kind of knowledge uh, is operating at the top of their game. So it becomes very hard to hire them and compensate them accordingly as well. Furthermore, there are so many failure points because you'll connect tool A to this, tool A, tool A to deployment, tool B to development, tool C to uh, testing. And these multiple failure points makes it hard to actually, you know, debug code or fix issues in production as well. Um, in case uh, there's an some uh, there is some apocalyptic scenario. Uh, so the biggest advantage that I found on GitLab was it took me like two weeks to figure out everything regarding the CI/CD or the whole CI/CD pipeline, how I can run different jobs on different environments, and then it, it became like super mainstream and it became very easy for me to handle everything. Furthermore, it became very easy for me to also train talent as well. So instead of trying to train people on different tools, GitLab was the only go-to place for pushing their code, for testing their code, for deploying their code. Furthermore, in case of bugs or anything, we had single point of investigation, which made it much, much easier as well. And in case of failure, there was less downtime because we only had to go to GitLab for a problem. Furthermore, for product managers and other non-tech people that I work with, GitLab's UI uh, makes it very easy for them to visualize how the whole development process is working and how the whole DevOps process is working as compared to they have to go to the CI CD configuration and see how these different jobs are running. So that makes, make, made it really easier and also made us explain that why we are using GitLab to our customers as well. So how I have, so this is, a, these are a couple of reasons that, you know, I transformed my previous companies and my current agency uh, using DevOps. So everyone should be able to use GitLab and create a simple pipeline, no matter if you're a UI, UI UX designer with some programming background, you're a product manager, you are a front end developer, no matter whoever you are, this is my rule number one. The second, um, and everyone should be able to debug and resolve simple issues as well. So if you create a simple pipeline, you should be able to resolve issues for that as well. Furthermore, one of the things that became really important and really um, apparent in the end that you need to have a clear branching strategy and you need to have uh, each branching strategy, um, each branch or each environment completely separate from each other and and involve a key person in between each uh, in each environments for that. So basically, uh, when we are building systems, which is more critical and we can't afford any errors, so I use this four branch strategy for development, for testing, which includes manual testing and automated testing. Then you know you do a UX testing on the live branch before you move it to the main branch, which is the customer facing branch. And this has helped us re reduce a lot of UX errors, a lot of um, error, uh, a lot of uh, problems with the code as well, and then uh, and it has never occurred uh, to us by following this strategy that there are any errors in the main branch. Furthermore, um, uh, we need to document each step of the workflow as well, and this is also based on a number of experience working with uh, remote freelancers, working with my own personal team, that uh, you need to have a first round of QA. Uh, each person who is responsible for that environment needs to give proper version tags and um, version tags and other um, uh, version tags uh, on it as well. 
And this is one of the workflows that I was working with my previous company. So basically our development and test environment was on a staging server and our live and, um, and, our live and main environment on the, uh, were on the live server with connected with live APIs. So we can also have dress rehearsals with our, new, um, with our new customers or our new vendors on the live server, but on the live environment. So uh, if they can commit a blunder or something, or there's some wrong data that they upload, uh, the end user might not see it. So uh, this is one of the others, our system architecture diagram and how to um, have our main, uh, the first uh, step with the development staging branch that is connected to the test server. The main uh, uh, test branch is also connected to the test database and server as well. Final QA branch and final main branch both have live servers on it. So users or testers are um, involving themselves or uh, integrate, are um, communicating with the live database and, and the live data. So um, I, was, uh, I was really interested in how much time GitLab or um, any single software suite saves you. And based on my calculations, dip, uh, GitLab has reduced our deployment time by at least 75%. It has reduced our pre and post mortem time, uh, pre, pre and post mortem, mortem time from days to hours. And especially after we do a feature, it becomes very easy to see uh, what kind of code quality was maintained, what kind of tests were written based on GitLab as compared to other tools. Furthermore, it enables continuous impro improvements in the product as well. And in some of the scenarios, when we start our meeting for the product demos, uh, it used to happen that we would fix that issue in the meeting and then uh, publish it and ship it out uh, to the deployment uh, server within that meeting. And uh, some of our clients were super impressed because of that as well. Uh, furthermore, we were able to involve, using GitLab UI, we were able to involve the product team and the product project stakeholders into the DevOps process as compared to they assuming we are, uh, as compared to they assuming we are writing some sort of, some sort of a magical code to do all of those integrations in the in our product. So basically, uh, while starting GitLab CI/CD, we had a lot of confusions. Uh, we had a lot of confusions because we used multiple tools, configuration, we're having multiple configuration issues, and eventually, while we adopted CI/CD tool, uh, GitLab CI/CD tool as the main CI/CD and the only single DevOps tool, everything became super easier, and it, and it was very easy to become an expert expert in one tool, which makes debugging your issues. Uh, faster and easier as well. So that is it. <laughs>